It's Wednesday. It's the 9th of July. I'm Moon Gon Young. This is Arirang News, live from Seoul. Our top stories today. North Korea, for the 13th time this year, launches two projectiles into the sea off its east coast in an apparent continuation of a recent series of missile and artillery test launches. And Typhoon Noguri, the strongest typhoon so far in the Western Pacific this season, churns northward after roaring through parts of Japan, leaving death. Now, Korea's Jeju Island is also affected by the storm. Flights are canceled and schools are closed. And goal, goal, goal with four more of those, Brazil's day went dark. The World Cup host team, regarded as football's superpower, lose helplessly to power squad Germany in the semifinals with tens of thousands of home fans watching. The final score, 7-1. But uh, let us begin this Wednesday afternoon with news on North Korea. Now, more missile launches by North Korea this morning, just days after the regime proposed an end to all military hostilities across the border. It's the 13th of its kind of this year, and it comes only a week after the Reclusive State fired two short-range projectiles. Arirang News' Hwang sang has the details. North Korea fired two short-range ballistic missiles into the East Sea early Wednesday morning. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the projectiles, believed to be Scud missiles with a range of 500 kilometers, were launched at around 4 a.m. Korea time from the north's western Hwangedo province without prior warning. The missiles fell in international waters. Wednesday's launch marks the 13th launch of projectiles by Pyongyang this year. North Korea had fired two short-range projectiles a week ago, just one day ahead of Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to South Korea. This latest launch also comes only days after Pyongyang claimed Seoul must shift its confrontational policy toward the north to one that would lead to reconciliation between the two Koreas. A South Korean military official who wished to remain anonymous said the latest missile launch could be seen as an armed demonstration by North Korea to show that it can fire missiles anywhere at any time. The South Korean military has heightened its vigilance and beefed up its military readiness against any additional provocations by the North. Hwang sang Arirang News. But what's posing a bigger threat, of course, to regional security is North Korea's nuclear program. The issue is expected to top the agenda of this year's annual U.S.-China dialogue, which kicked off just about uh, an hour ago in Beijing. Park ji has the details on this two-day meeting. The U.S. and China began their sixth meeting of the U.S.-China Strategic and Economic Dialogue in Beijing from this Wednesday. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Treasury Secretary Jacob Liu will discuss a diverse range of issues with their Chinese counterparts, Chinese State Counselor Yang Zhechu and Vice Premier Wang Yang. U.S. State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki says the North Korean nuclear issue is sure to come up during the talks. But certainly we expect uh, the threat from North Korea, our concerns about North Korea, to be a part of the discussion uh, ongoing on the ground now. However, the two sides are far apart on issues related to Pyongyang's nuclear program. China, North Korea's only ally, wants to address the issue by moderate persuasion and resuming the long-stalled six-party talks. The U.S. says North Korea first needs to take steps to abide by its past obligations, such as the landmark statement it signed at the six-party talks in September 2005, when Pyongyang agreed to abandon its nuclear program. How to best um, work together to put the necessary pressure on North Korea, but the ball remains in their court to take uh, the necessary steps to abide by their international obligations. A bilateral investment treaty and China's valuation of its currency will also be discussed. The two nations will also exchange views on sensitive issues like territorial disputes in the South China Sea and China's alleged hacking attacks on U.S. companies. Park ji Arirang News. Now, Japan plans to use drones to boost its maritime surveillance capabilities to better respond to natural disasters and improve security around remote islands. 
According to one of Japan's leading economic dailies, the Nihon Keizai Shinbun Tuesday, the Japanese government is looking to deploy two high-altitude long-range drones to be used with an existing satellite-based monitoring system. Now, the drones will cruise over designated areas above waters at an altitude greater than 15 kilometers, which is a height where there will be um, unaffected by weather for up to 72 hours. Well, the plan comes amid China's aggressive expansion of its maritime presence and follows a series of intrusions of Chinese vessels into Japanese waters. Meanwhile, an NGO in the Netherlands has staged a protest against the Japanese government's review of the 1993 Kono Statement. Members of the Dutch Group Foundation of Japanese Honorary Debts on Tuesday gathered in front of the Japanese embassy in The Hague to demand an apology and compensation for the Japanese military's wrongdoing during World War II. Now, this is the first such protest in Europe since Japan released the results of its review of the statement late last month. And the NGO president, Jan van Wachtendorck, described the results as false and called it a trick aimed at concluding the statement was the result of diplomatic negotiations between Korea and Japan. He said that if Japan really wanted to conduct a review, it should appoint an independent group under the auspices of the UN Human Rights Commission. Now moving on to weather news. Packing a major punch, Typhoon Noguri is bringing 250 km per hour wind gusts. Now this is equivalent to a Category 5 hurricane in the U.S. and a heavy rains to Japan's southern coastline. A typhoon warning has also been issued for Korea's southern island of Jeju, and officials are warning residents to prepare for heavy rain, strong winds, and high waves. Our Shin Sun has more on the strongest typhoon yet in the Western Pacific this season. Bringing heavy winds and rain, Typhoon Dogori is turning northward toward mainland Japan. And it's also directly influencing waters off Korea's southern Jeju Island. The Korea Meteorological Administration issued a typhoon warning over the waters Wednesday morning, saying the storm will bring torrential rain and high winds. And according to the alerts, Jeju Island could see up to 30 millimeters of rain per hour, with the wind gust of up to 20 meters per second. The strongest typhoon so far in the 2014 Western Pacific season was at its most powerful when it passed Okinawa on Tuesday. At least two people have been killed and more than a dozen injured. Japanese officials have issued the strongest warning to residents in the typhoon's path. Over 500,000 people on the islands were forced to seek shelter. All domestic flights to and from Okinawa had been canceled until further notice and over 95,000 households in the region have no power. Dogori has lost some of its intensity from its original status as a super typhoon, but it still remains intense, packing gusts of more than 250 kilometers per hour. And Dogori will directly affect Jeju on this Wednesday and make landfall on Japan's Kyushu Island late Wednesday local time. Shin Zemin, Arirang News. Well, um, we certainly hope that there will be no more damages from uh, that typhoon and um, that everyone really uh, stay out of the path and, and stay safe and sound. But uh, let's turn to our Michelle Park for the, uh, the weather forecast at uh, Korea's Jeju Island in particular. Michelle, it's being affected uh, by this typhoon, right? Good afternoon, and it's currently, like you said, just a cloudy day here in the central region, but Typhoon Noguri is moving northwards and getting closer to the Korean peninsula, and it is currently having a difficult time and direct effect on Jeju Island, where it's raining and there is strong wind advisory in effect. And with this influence of the typhoon, rain is expected nationwide today. The mountainous regions of Jeju can expect it up to 200 millimeters of rain until tomorrow, uh, while the central region can expect it up to 5 to 40 millimeters in the evening and tops down to 60 in the southern regions. And besides this rain, we can expect a hot and humid weather nationwide, uh, which has increased the discomfort index. So today is a good day to spend the day indoors. Now going over to our temperature readings. So we'll top out at 32 this afternoon. Meanwhile, the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan will peak up to both at 28 degrees. And moving over to other regions, Jeju Island tops over to 26, Tokdo at 28, while Nankungang tops to 26.
All of the day's important events, events close to home and around the world. Join Moon Gon Yong, live from Seoul. Whole shopping market. For the dual use of the Korean name E, C, and Japanese name C of Japan in school textbooks in the state of Virginia. The World Cup was out of our focus for the past couple of days, but the real game begins now over in Brazil, with the semifinals having kicked off earlier this morning, Korea time. While it was arguably the most shocking result in World Cup history, let alone at this year's tournament, Germany completely dismantled the host nation Brazil in Tuesday's semifinal, thrashing them 7-1. Germany will take on either Argentina or the Netherlands in Sunday's final. Our sports correspondent SJ Lee has the highlights. With millions of Brazilian fans hoping to see their national team advance to their first World Cup final since the 2002 Korea-Japan World Cup, expectations were high. But with high expectations came an even bigger disappointment as Brazil were thrashed 7-1 by Germany. With star striker Neymar out with an injury, the bigger blow to the Brazilian team was the absence of their captain and defender Thiago Silva, who was suspended due to yellow card accumulation. And with the cornerstone of the Brazilian defense unavailable, Germany scored five times in the first 30 minutes. One of the goals during the 30-minute frenzy came from the boot of 36-year-old Miloslav Klose, who broke the all-time World Cup goal record once held by none other than Brazil's Ronaldo by scoring his 16th World Cup goal in the 23rd minute of the match. For Germany, it was a sweet revenge for their 2-0 loss against Brazil in 2002 World Cup final. Germany will now play either Argentina or the Netherlands in the final on Sunday local time, while they have a shot at lifting their first World Cup since 1990 when they won as West Germany. SJ Lee, Arirang News. Now, after Samsung Electronics posted far from impressive earnings for the second quarter earlier this week, it's pushing to find its next big thing to get back on track. Kim ji has the details. The future of Samsung Electronics lies in the balance, and that was never more true than now. One after another, securities firms are lowering their projections for Samsung's third quarter after the company reported lower-than-expected earnings for the previous quarter. At least 26 securities firms in Seoul already say the smartphone maker will record an average of 8.5 billion U.S. dollars in operating profit in the third quarter, which is a drop of more than 15 percent from last year's projections projections for the same period. Samsung's slowdown in the second quarter, which industry insiders are referring to as an earnings shock, is widely seen as a result of a slowdown resonating from a smartphone market that's become saturated and is not expected to pick up anytime soon. In response, Samsung is eyeing its next growth engine. One of these is the Internet of Things, where various smart devices are connected through the Internet using sensors on gadgets. As a manufacturer of electronic electronic devices, Samsung does have a strength in this field. The company launched its smart home in April, which connects smart sensors and home appliances. The service makes home automation easy with a single app that connects and controls many home appliances, from TVs and mobile devices to internet-connected burglar alarms and light switches. Samsung is also working to promote its health and fitness gadgets. The Samsung Strategy and Innovation Center in Silicon Valley in the United United States presented a service in May called Sami, a cloud platform that saves and analyzes collected data from the company's wearable devices, the Samsung Gear and the Gear Fit. Kim Jung, Arirang News. Well, it's not only Samsung Electronics that posted disappointing second quarter earnings. The nation's top 20 conglomerates by market capitalization are also expected to follow suit, falling roughly 7%. Here's our Kim Min Ji. Korea's top 20 conglomerates by market capitalization are expected to turn in disappointing scorecards for the second quarter. According to market researcher F and Guide, the combined operating profit of the top 20 companies is expected to amount to about 18 trillion won, or roughly 17.8 billion U.S. dollars, which is down 7.1 percent from last year. Their combined sales are also expected to fall about 1 percent to sit at just over 200 billion dollars. The slip has come on the back of a stronger one, which has hit export-reliant firms the hardest. Automobile companies' profits will also be affected. 
The operating profit for Hyundai Motor, the second largest, is expected to come to roughly $2.3 billion, down 6.7 percent from last year. During the same period, Kia Motors is also likely to see a drop of almost 21 percent. The automobile industry says that sales will be similar to last year, driven by the sales of new cars, but operating profits will dip due to the stronger one and marketing expenses related to the Brazil World Cup. POSCO, LG Display and Hyundai Heavy Industries are also expected to see a decline. On the flip side, firms in the financial and IT sectors will likely turn in strong report cards, with firms centered around domestic consumption set to benefit from the strong one. Samsung CNT is expected to see a jump of about 59 percent, Neighbor 32 percent and LG Electronics 10.3 percent. LG's mobile communications division is also likely to turn a profit in the second quarter on strong sales of its new G3 smartphone, and that's expected to have a positive effect on the performance cards of affiliates that supply parts to LG and tech giant Samsung Electronics. Kim min Arirang News. Now, with the Chinese President Xi Jinping's recent visit to Seoul and a slew of economic deals freshly signed, it would be fair to say that the economic relationship between South Korea and China has never been better. Bilateral trade has jumped many folds in recent years, and cooperation is beginning to expand into financial and other new sectors as well. Our Connie Kim reports on the rapidly expanding economic and business relationship. Trade volume between South Korea and China is expected to reach a record high this year, and bilateral economic ties are only expected to strengthen moving forward. Trade between the two countries jumped 50-fold from 1992 to last year to 270 billion U.S. dollars. China's past investments in Korea were limited to real estate and industries related to the Korean wave, but the landscape is changing. Beijing has diversified its investments into Korea's IT, service and content sectors, providing a boost to the Korean market. Take Chinese investment company Tencent, for example. It promised in March to invest $523 million into Korea's CJ Games, far exceeding the amount of China said it would invest in Korea for the whole of last year, which was $480 million. However, it's not just these ties that will strengthen bilateral relations. Experts say the two nations should now expand cooperation in the financial industry to further facilitate trade, investment and other bilateral economic ties. The biggest achievement with President Xi Jinping's visit to Seoul was pushing for economic cooperation between two countries by allowing direct trading between the yuan and the yuan and allowing Korean companies to directly invest yuan in China's stock and fund market. It will create another yuan market that will facilitate bilateral cooperation. And in the face of an influx of Chinese money and a bigger business presence in the country, experts say Korea must maintain its source technology and develop a competitive edge in the service industry. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Well, uh, Korea's exports of information and communication technology products hit a record high in the first six months of this year on robust outbound shipments of semiconductors and mobile phones. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy says that exports of ICT products came to roughly 84 billion U.S. dollars in the first half of this year, which is up more than 3 percent from the same period a year ago. The record performance came despite the strength of the local currency and an overall slump in the global ICT market. Well, imports of ICT products also rose almost 7.5 percent to $42 billion in the first half of the year. The Korean government carried out 70 percent of the regulatory reforms that it had planned for 2014 in the first six months of this year. Seoul's Ministry of Strategy and Finance said Tuesday that it revised 19 out of the 27 regulations, including easing restrictions on food trucks and increasing support for small and medium-sized enterprises dealing with chemicals. Now, regulations that still need work are removing blockages to the growth of SMEs and allowing the construction of manufacturing plants within complexes near harbors. The Korean government plans to complete reforms on most of the regulations by the end of this month. Deregulation has been high on President Park Geun-hye's economic agenda in her efforts to spur business activities and corporate investment.
Well, uh, let's shift over to our arts and culture segment, and our Im Yoon Hee joins me live. Today, we will be looking at a fusion concert, and uh, she will be bringing us an update on that. Good afternoon to you, Yoon Hee. Good afternoon. So, a fusion concert it is. Right, so today I have an event that really shows the differences and similarities between the two countries, uh, Korea and Germany, through the use of display of visual arts and music. So, take a look. The voice is an instrument for many when it comes to the arts. And for many others, it can be a violin or a guitar. Regardless of the means, the end result is an expression of the artist. And in this case, an experience of the classical. That includes everything from the harmony of music to the power of a painting. The creation of music and painting comes from the same source of inspiration, so we prepared a fun way to enjoy both at the same time. However, the East and West are very different when it comes to those two subjects, so we also wanted to show these differences while still being able to appreciate both. Iwa Women's University is a prestigious school with a vast arts department, the perfect host for this year's arts concert. The distinct sounds of Korean traditions and culture represent the East in this cultural exchange. Together, these Korean traditional sounds weave to form harmony and a partnership brought forth by the Iwa Traditional Music Ensemble, a group of musicians that bring each instrument's unique sounds to life. The most prominent feature of the tegum is that it makes a very clear sound. The most famous tegum solo is called Cheongseonggok, and it goes like this. Nowadays, the need to spread Korean music is not as prominent. Instead, we can use our willpower and efforts to create the music and sounds we want to hear, and this is the perfect opportunity to do so. You know, I'm a big fan of the Taegum, so mm -hmm. um, I play the flute, so this oh. is like a Korean version of it. So um, I think it's, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But as we just saw, the two featured countries are Korea and Germany. Right, so this is actually an event that's taking place uh, for one night, so tomorrow night at the Iwa campus. Um, and so the, they're going to be showing about roughly 40 different paintings um, from the two countries, and they're also going to be performing musical pieces, um, and they're going to be categorized into four sections, humanism, extraordinariness, nobility, and realism. So a variety of different genres and uh, types, but really just an overall great event to see different kinds uh, between the two countries. Right, and um, you know those four categories, they seem a little bit um, um, ambiguous to us right now, but yes. we're, we will get to find out you know, what exactly mm -hmm. they mean if we go to the event tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they plan to do this uh, annually, is that right? Right, so they've done it, uh, this is the, they've done it a few times now, and the, they've done it before with Austria, and then they also plan on the future doing it with um, Italy and France and other countries that have a lot to offer when it comes to art and so Korea itself uh, does have a lot to offer as well so it's a great cultural exchange that takes place I'm at a beautiful school and it's a good opportunity for the students who participate as well as the students who you know come to look around as well so it's a good chance oh, definitely a good person-to-person uh, -person mm -hmm. cultural exchange between the two countries all right Yunhee, thank you so much for that report always a pleasure <laughs> And that is just about all for me at this hour. I'm Moon Gun Young. Check back with us at 4 p.m. Korea time for Business Today.